G'day ZKD here and welcome back to the Pillars of Eternity role playthrough where our tough decisions must be made. My head's still reeling from the previous decisions to let the couple go. I just, I hope I made the right one. But uh, as I'm leaving town, I, uh, <laughs> I, I accidentally graze against a passing citizen and <laughs> have a vision. But uh, as I'm leaving town, my curiosity gets the better of me of this staircase here, which no one, everyone seems to be avoiding and no one seems to be talking about. They've talked about the ruins of this old temple and how they may rebuild it, but no one's talked about the basement or, you know, what what these stairs lead down to. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm a curious person and my curiosity gets the better of me. We decide to just poke our head down and have a little bit of a look. <laughs> we'll see if we, we if we sort of live to regret this decision. Is that a... Is this man alive? A rising sun and the three dawn stars, the symbol of Eothus. Alright, let's... Please help me here. Wurton. A man lies resting against the wall, lit by the dim illumination of the fading sconces. He has a gaunt, fox-like aspect, and his face is pale and damp with sweat. One arm is held loosely against his side, sleeves soaked with blood. He gives you an anxious glance as you near, his features twisted with pain. Hail and well met. Ha! Huh. Thought you were some... Never mind. Whoever you are, you've travelled a long way to reach a dark place. He's recognised us as a godlike. This temple isn't what it used to be, probably for the best. Times being as they are. He groans and shifts position, wincing. I'm no looter, if that's what you're thinking. Not one of the faithful either. Just wanted to do some good, I suppose. Got my arm clawed up for it. He regards you wearily. Maybe you'd have better luck. Better luck with what? The man points a finger upwards. These ruins around us used to be a temple of the Earthus, the scattered god. A grand temple at that. His worshippers would come from all over the Durwood, from Raid Cirrus even. Raid Cirrus. Until the war, of course. Even then, you'd get some of the stubborn ones. The ones that couldn't get it through their heads that their god, god was gone and dead. Go on. <laughs> Once the legacy started, Lord Raindrick decided he'd been too lenient on the Eothesians. He'd had his people go in and put them to the sword, left them down there buried under a heap of rock. After that, Raindrick ordered the temple sealed. It's been years like that up until recently. Lord Raindrick hopes if, that, if we rededicate the temple to the living god, then we'll be forgiven, and the legacy will end, see? He smiles wryly. But until then, the temple is is as you see it, unguarded. That's where you come in. Wurton licks his lips. <laughs> Those priests, maybe they didn't have a lick of sense between them, but they still didn't deserve to go like that. Chop down in their god's house, it doesn't sit right with me. If you can get down there, find their remains, maybe we can give them a, finally give them a proper burial. Wurton breathes out. No small task, there's coin in it for you if you need motivating. Aloth's cautious expression softens. A pleasant surprise to see that someone around here has a shred of respect for the dead. I take it you aren't supposed to be in here. Wurton laughs bleakly. Well, I meant to be in and out nice and quick. I'm not hurting anyone. It's just Lord Raedric's forbidden anyone having anything to do with the scattered god. It'd be a little harder to explain it to him than you. It, it's a good cause though, isn't it? And you could make some coin in the process after all. So wait, let me get this straight. You want me to bring you some skeletons? I'd bury them where they are if I could. I would know it's a little macabre, but we don't get them out now. Raedric's liable to destroy whatever's left of them. Okay, I have some questions first. Yes? Why can't you do this yourself? Well, I tried. Only got a short ways in before I got in over my head. Word and grimaces. I haven't raised a blade in a long time. Turns out it is something you can just pick up again. But you look like you can handle yourself. So is there any chance there's something down there worth a little more than some old bones? Wurton looks around. Probably. Nobody's been down there through the place since it was sealed up. Well, apart from me, and I didn't touch anything. Any valuables in there, you get first crack at them. I only ask you do this favour for me while you're at it. So, Lord Raedric won't mind us digging around? <laughs> I wouldn't go telling him about it. Lingering in these places, it's no good for anyone. But you do this quick and quiet, and we can do it right by those priests without raising a fuss. So who are you anyway to want to do this? He offers a weak grin. Name's Wurton. I've lived in the Gilded Vale long enough to remember how grand it used to be. He shrugs and looks away. I used to help the temple sometimes, bring supplies. That's all. Very well, I have no more questions. I'll find them if I can. Then by the flame, I owe you a good turn. But listen, the temple's been sealed off for so long, it's crawling with creatures. 
but if you get past them, the priests would have done, been down there on the lower floor. They'll be there still if they're anywhere. Those priests are in all kind of secret chambers, switches in the walls, trick sconces, that kind of skin, and that kind of thing. Keep an eye out and take care down there. I wouldn't want to have to send someone else after your remains. <laughs> he looks up at the stairs. You might talk to that Edda fella if Raedric wasn't hasn't hanged him yet. Word is he's a follower of the dead god. Maybe he'll know something more about this place. He's usually out by the smithy. Hmm, okay. Edda. I'll wait there by the stairs and keep a lookout and maybe try to patch myself up some. Okay, so he, he just had a scratched arm. He's doing okay. I'm going to get talk to this Edo fellow first and see what we can find out. Because information seems like it could be key here. I don't really know what lies down there. And he might know some more. Okay, here he is. Having, uh, having a cigarette or a pipe. <laughs> the smell of the pipe smoke and at once the earthly and sweet winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin, where you find a broad man with straw-coloured hair leaning against a mossy rock wall, his pipe held to his lips in one meaty hand. He looks at you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar smirk. Seventeen and a half. Well, could be eighteen, depending on how you count the dwarf woman. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. <laughs> I, I think you oughta. <laughs> I... I, I wasn't, but thanks. <laughs> the people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Aloth frowns. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be nineteen. He looks you up and down and grimaces. I don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. What makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? probably watched this earlier. <laughs> he looks at you a moment and his brow arched, his, his smoke broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. <laughs> probably looked a little weird. Mouth was so slack I took you for a Radrick at first. <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been out of sorts lately. Of course, we all got our bad days when we stand perfectly still and stare at corpses for a while without blinking. <laughs> he winks. Okay. <laughs> Uh, do you happen to know what a watcher is, Adair? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word round here. I should be less liberal with that. Could be any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here. Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. What is that supposed to mean exactly? Hey, don't blame me. I don't have a say. You can take my word for that. The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fellow who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. Why was your headman hanged exactly? He got involved. <laughs> Simple. Raedric sent men down here the other day. Said they had it on good authority someone in town was working for Kolsk, plotting Raedric's overthrow. Said if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every one, last one of us. No one was coming forward. So Swithin, that's my headman, he steps up and says it's him. They took him at his word. He took it for his men. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later. If not for plotting against Raedric, then for protecting me. What does your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. Used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there? That was a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethys. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethys isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. Hmm, well, I've been instructed to talk to Widewind as well. After the war, people took to correctly. punishing Aethys worshippers, accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, 
that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, the townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Raedric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. So he's basically just wait, waiting for the soldiers to rock up and hang him at the moment. <laughs> How does he get out of here? Aeloth glances at you and lowers his voice. You can see why I was eager to leave. Who is Kolsk? You mentioned earlier. Someone got tired of all the hangings. He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. So, if you're next to be hanged, what are you still doing here? He gives a half smile. Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out. I just haven't figured out where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there, and I don't think Widewin's legacy started with Widewin. Hmm. Well, we could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Cade Nua. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. Don't know why I never thought of it before. Not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. Scratches, I but scratch my head. truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. No, I'd like to not say anything added to that grizzly, grizzly sign. There's a fine reason if I ever heard one. Alright then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. Because <laughs> he's referring to me standing there staring at a dead, dead, dead dwarf lady for ten minutes. Well, let's get going. Now, we have a friend joining our party now, guys. Which is very exciting and uh, should be very helpful. Though, it was said that hey. he had some, may have some information All for right, us. Then. Let's familiarize ourselves with our new Adair friend. So, Adair seems to be a fighter of sorts. He, uh, he is currently wielding a saber, a uh, medium shield, and he also has a war bow, so he seems pretty pretty adept at combat. He does, um, he is looking like he's sporting some uh, enchanted uh, armor here. Uh, it gives him a second chance, grants second chance. Not exactly sure how that works. It seems to be uh, a spell, perhaps something that, uh, if he takes too much damage in combat, might might sort of save him. It's also pierce proof which gives extra damage reduction against piercing. And it is scale mail armor. Saints war armor. Hmm, nice. So he seems he could be he could be a paladin. Let's let's learn a little more about him. He's a third level fighter. Background he's from the Durwood and farmer. Yeah, okay, so we're pretty familiar with him. He's he's pretty strong and a hardy folk. And uh looks like in terms of skills we can probably take a little bit of a look here. Uh he has defender mode which allows him to adopt a more conservative combat strategy, concentrating on defending incoming attacks. The fighter receives a bonus to deflection and increases his or her number of engagement targets to three, so he can sort of take the attention of three people without being flanked. And then he also has the ability to knock an enemy down as well. Now I'd like to talk to him again and see if we can find any more information out about down here. Let's head down there first though. Okay, it sounds like he doesn't have any information for us yet, but maybe some of his knowledge will come out when we head deeper into the temple. Okay. I'm a little bit nervous about heading down here. There's so much unknown and so much unknown, but let's wander forwards and see what we find. All right, crumbling, crumbling ruins, but there is these uh, sort of light orbs on the on the walls there. Let's explore. All right, there is uh, there is a spider in this room. Let's let's uh, go ahead and sort of sneak forwards a little bit and see what we can see. All right, I might have uh, myself sneak forwards. I should probably we should probably make camp at some point through traveling in here though, because. I am actually not too healthy. Alright, I see two spiders. Let's move forwards a little. Alright, I see three spiders. Four spiders. Alright, there's actually... Uh, oh, and there's a, one of them's larger as well. Now, do we know anything about this? Ivory spiderlings. I don't think we've encountered ivory spiderlings before. We have encountered spiders, but none like this. It seems like hmm? the smartest thing to do would have... All right, then. Uh, Adair stand in the doorway here. And, uh... Sort of hold off the spiders while maybe we sling some spells at him. Yes. I think we can. I think we can potentially do this. We'll slow things down a little, and uh, see what we can do. All right. Now I do have uh, some uh, a power. I do have a powerful uh, ability here that could could help. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly what is the range of the jump. Plus five targets. I'm not sure how. We might wait until the spider is a little bit closer to each other, perhaps. 
I'm, I'm slowly being noticed here, we better take a step back so that they don't uh, don't catch us off guard. By the way, I forgot to mention, I when when I discovered I was a Watcher, I learned a little bit more about myself and learned this particular ability here, Crucible of the Soul, which absorbs en uh, vital essence from enemies around me and uh, healing myself. So an interesting uh, ability that could could well come in handy. All right, so I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna start off by blowing one of them up. Let's let's try that, shall we? <laughs> okay, they, there goes there goes one of them. Let's go ahead and use a, a missile here, a magical missile, and then uh, I myself will retreat now that I've cast that spell, and we're gonna stand behind him if we can. All right, the missiles seem reasonably effective. These spider spiderlings are tough though. They ate a full mind blast, and he still looks in pretty good shape, so that is concerning. Right, I'm gonna have have him enter defense mode here, and hopefully engage the spiders. Alright, from this point, I think I'm going to pull out my bow, and uh, attack the spider from here. May may actually, maybe I'll close in for melee for now. And I'll have, uh, I'll have Aloth prepare another spell. Uh, the magic missile seemed like it was pretty effective. I am I'm con I'm concerned about using something like Fan of Fame Flames for obvious reasons, <laughs> for obvious obvious reasons, and I think now, um, I think I'll just I think I'll throw another uh, missile out here and see if we can finish off this spiderling before it engages. It'll take a while to prepare that spell. All right, that was pretty effective. Looks like the other spiders haven't wandered out, so I might be able to deal with this guy by himself. All right, that's good. That's a good start. All right, let's wait for everyone to catch their breath here. Now I'm going to move out, let's sneak forwards a little. Alright, we've spotted the other spiders. And I'm going to attempt to use my new Mind Blades spell, and then I'll retreat behind my behind my friends. Here we go. Very nice, alright, let's back off, let's back off. Alright, we'll have him engage here. Now his, his staff can actually fire um, sort of uh, magical projectiles from it as well, but what I might actually do is move forwards and burn down the spiders if I can here. All right, let's try it right now, right now. All right, hopefully they'll close in uh, just as... They should close in just as I get this spell off here. Oh, shooting some web at me. Oh, it was very, very effective. All right, let's have Aloth move in here. And I'll pull out my bow and engage from behind here. Damn, that was very effective. <laughs> that fire spell was very impressive. Alright, let's just keep an eye on things. Oh, took a lot of damage and has become... It looks like it's become sickened by the spider's attack as well. Alright, this is concerning. Let's make sure everyone is focusing the spider here. Alright, the spider is almost downed. Damn, we're gonna have to rest after this. Okay, that thing was very, very nasty. Okay, alright, looks like the sickness has passed. It seems like a momentary sickness that uh, takes effect uh, just shortly after its bite. That wears off quickly. Okay. So we've learned a little bit more about these. Let's consult our bestiary now and see what we've learned about these things so far. Uh, ivory spiderling, here we go. So we've learned a little bit about them. There's we know we know of some of their history. Don't really know exactly. We know some of their damage resistant. They're highly resistant to slashing attacks. Uh, but not as resistant to crushing attacks. Okay, makes sense, you know. You what do you, what do, you do when you encounter a spider? You step on it. <laughs> Crush it with a shoe. These things are a little bit bigger, but the same idea applies. Okay, and the ivory spinner is even tougher again. So slashing attacks, not going to be very effective. Uh, no damage resistance in particular against piercing attacks though, so bow attacks should be fine. But uh, I may wish to uh, switch away from... Do I have? Am I using any crushing weapons currently? Only my torch. Only my torch, so that thing won't be very effective. How may I help? I think, let's just examine Aloth's weapon here for a second. I believe its damage type is crush slash slash. Interesting. That might be uh, for melee though, because I think its its magical attack is fire based. We'll have to learn a little bit more about it. Let's examine this little box here. Hmm. A gemstone and a letter home. Mother, I have asked Brother Edric to carry this letter to you. For he travels to New Heomar come morning. With him goes what coin I have, and I hope it will ease the surprise of an unexpected homecoming, for I mean to follow in a few days' time. Our village is much changed, and though I do not wish for you to worry, I do not feel it safe to remain. I know Rectrix Obrica will not approve, but the letter trails off here. Oh, sounds like she was in the middle of writing a lever, and it never made it home. 
Whoever sat here left in a hurry, ink has dripped across the scroll, obscuring its contents. The pile of furniture is branded with scorch marks. Alright, looks like there's nothing else in this room that I can see. Unless we can sort of scout you and You might find, find anything. this interesting. Aha! Interesting. Good spot, Aeloth. Good eyes, sir. Good eyes. Alright, let's let's examine a little bit more closely. Uh-oh. Alright, the uh, the walls start shifting. We sense, a, we sense a presence on the other side. Oh, it creeps down. Alright. Form positions. Form positions. Hi. <laughs> Come on, guys. Work together here. <laughs> Work together. Alright, let's move forwards a little. Let's move forwards a little. Now, we do actually have access to formations. I might uh, take a triangle formation here. Which will make a bit more sense. Uh, the formation might not be the exact formation I want. Uh, that's fine though. I can lead with I can lead with a spell. All right, I'm gonna creep forwards here and see if we can see if there's anything else behind. No, it's just a one, and he is gonna notice me if I'm not careful. It's just a skull of the world, which we've we've had a few encounters with these guys, so it shouldn't be a problem. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and mind blast him. Now I'm actually. Looks like Aeloth is all fully tapped as far as spells go, so I think we might have to rest after this fight. So we'll have Aeloth engage with his magical staff then, and I myself am going to do a mind wave. I have a little bit more uh, ability to sort of continue going, I guess, in fights, because I can build up my focus through fights. Alright, then we'll have him move in for melee. Let's do this. Mind Blast was fairly effective. Uh, and I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, he's almost down, let's just finish him off then if that's the case. Switch over to our melee weapon. We should consult our beastery before fighting opponents though, so we learn a little bit more about them. Alright, that was effective. Okay, now that we've cleared that, what I'm going to do is, we're going to, we're going to use some of our camping supplies to rest in here. Because, uh, we are not looking great. <laughs> Especially myself. And, uh, I believe Aeloth needs to rest and meditate to recover his spells. Typical wizard fashion. Always needing to sleep. Alright, let's go ahead and use some of our camping supplies. Alright, despite our conditions, we got ourselves a good sleep. Let's continue off. A Aeloth should yes. uh, be at full combat efficiency again now. Alright, so we're going to still nice move forwards pretty quiet. carefully here. Let's examine this. These collapsed stones are pocked with burrows and narrow crevices, claw marks and dung marks, passage of the passage of beasts. So, I don't think that was going to be the only thing that we just encountered. Alright, there's another one up here. Uh, I'm going to explore a little bit. Let's first let's first consult our beastery. How about that? Learn a little bit more about these things. So, these are the Scolders here, which uh, they have no damage resistance, essentially. So, anything is going to work well against them. We don't know too much else about them, other than I think they're fairly dangerous in melee combat. But, otherwise, not too not too difficult to deal with. Alright, let me, let me move up forwards a little bit here and... It, just sort of explore. Just make sure there's nothing behind us. Alright, I don't see, see anything over there. Let me poke forwards a little bit. Okay, this seems fine. This seems fine. We can we can engage him. Alright, let's just have everyone engage. The old-fashioned style, shall we? A bit of the old-fashioned style. Hey. Still in defensive mode, which should be fine. <laughs> pretty effective, I think. Just an old-fashioned wailing works pretty well. Vermin, vermin have scoured these plates, though. Mold still grows in green-black clumps across the table. All right, I think I might. Uh, I think I might continue exploring around the left-hand side here. There's going to be quite some dungeon clearing ahead of us, guys. I'm feeling a, a solid session of dungeon clearing. All right, I got some crates here. Let's see what we've got. If we've oh! Away, take them all with us. Oh man. Okay. I have I have experienced my first trap, <laughs> and Aeloth falls, <laughs> shot through the face by an arrow. Is Aeloth Aeloth is able okay. to recover from this, <laughs> but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some resting. Wow, wow, that's evil. Okay, well I guess then. It's time for us to time for us to camp. Aeloth is brought to near death <laughs> by an arrow piercing his torso, uh, and the only thing left is for us to. Uh, <laughs> he's he's heavily heavily maimed. Aeloth, bro, yes. I'm sorry, man. We're gonna be so much more careful now. I promise. I promise. We're gonna be much more careful. Keep those elf eyes looking. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and rest. It's the only way to uh, recover such such grievous wounds. Okay. Yes. After a uh, a fair rest, Aeloth has recovered, and uh, <laughs> I think we've learned our lesson. We're going to be creeping carefully before we examine things like this. 
Uh, it makes sense why this particular cache cachet was uh, protected because there is a, a ring of a powerful ring of protection in here, which I'm going to uh, I'm going to give to our new friend here, who seems to take a lot of a lot of the uh, brunt of the assault, since it'll provide a whole bunch of extra protect protection to him, who will be needing it most. So let's be very careful opening containers in the future, guys. All right, creeping forwards, I notice a scolder though. This one seems to be different to the others. It seems uh, it seems darker and uh, perhaps more heavily armored. I'm not sure. All right, let's let's creep forward slightly more. Let's see, I'm gonna see if there's anything else hiding in the room here. All right, you guys, there's actually there's three of them. There's three of them. Okay, uh, I think in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna ta I'm gonna take a step back. We'll have We'll have Adair stand in the doorway once again. Let's have him. Let's have him stand slightly back from the doorway. Actually, let's let's move back here and position ourselves a little bit better. All right. Hey. Now, if Adair stands here, they're they're not going to be able to funnel into the doorway as quite as easily. Uh, I myself will be able to sort of position maybe maybe here, but I would like I would like uh, Aloth most importantly to use some powerful magics to engage with. So let's let's see how we go. I think um. I think Ray of Fire would probably be not not a bad idea. Okay, now we are in danger of being noticed here. I might uh I might open with an eye strike. Uh, is my range okay here? Oh, I have to move forwards a little bit. Let's back it up because there's actually a lot in here. All right, this this could be dangerous. All right, I think he's noticed. He's noticed. All right, yes. let's let's have Aloth move forwards, and we'll get ready with a a fan of flames. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, they've noticed us. A no, Aloth is blocked off by Adair. All right, let's have him move around the top side here. Hey. All right, move up, s mm, move hey. up slightly. Oh my God, there's so many of them. Okay, um, what's going to be best then? Hmm, what else do we have access to? Maybe, maybe bewildering spectacle here in the doorway would be the best thing to do. All right, let's let's wait slightly. I'm going to slow things down. All right, wait for the engagement. All right, they're all moving in. Let's try and confuse them as much as possible. Okay, this sh this should work hopefully. This should hopefully work well. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm going to follow up with a Mind Wave here, which should knock back the other ones. If I use Mind Wave here, the Concussive Blast behind should knock some of them down. Hopefully if I'm lucky. Oh, very, very effective. All right, good. And now we have the, 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 the dazzling, confusing magic as well, forcing them to retreat. All right, I'm going to have to... Uh, I might switch to my bow here and engage just for a second. Hmm? We'll have, uh, we'll have, I think we'll have Adair hold his ground, I'm and I'm gonna follow up with. Actually, let's have hmm? Adair retreat back a little. Uh, I'm gonna move back here. Let's don't don't rush into the doorway. All right, let's move forwards. That was super effective. Damn. All right, let's move forwards here, and then I'm going to fan of flames through the doorway, which should hopefully also be very effective. All right, they're moving back. Let's actually move forwards a little bit. We're gonna have to recast. Fan of flames. All right, quickly, quickly, Aloth. Quickly, my friend. Yes, and they're attacking each other as well in the confusion. Wow, that was super effective. All right, let's move in and finish off the Skulder. The Fan of flames, them fighting in the confusion. I couldn't ask for a better, better situation, really. Move back, move back. All right, engage again. <laughs> I think that went pretty well. I think that went pretty well. Oh, what the? Okay. Let's approach with caution here. I'm having another vision. Spirit. A haze fills the air, coalescing steadily into a blur of dust and mist. It gathers into an outline of what appears to be a dwarf, shimmering echo that fades in and out of sight. But stronger than sight in the, is the sense within you of a powerful energy. It reels and seethes with a grief that seems to spill into your own thoughts, tainting them until the sorrow is your own. Like a crashing wave, the energy surges towards and into you, and suddenly you're elsewhere. Before you is a brightly lit stone corridor, lined with torches and gleaming crystals. You're running, your footsteps echoing off the stone around you. You forget to tie your sandals, and they're slipping from your feet, fouling your steps. You're late again. The ride's going to begin without you. You hear the tolling of a bell, and your spirits lift as you recognize the familiar warped tone of the right hand, representing the first of the dawn stars to appear in the night sky, and the last to fade in the dawn light. You pray fiercely that this is the first of the chimes and not the last. 
The lights fade, as does the memory, and when your eyes clear, the spirit is gone. An interesting sight. Buried secrets. Okay, let's search the beasts here. Uh, we were able to clean the scalded ears, which perhaps we can we can trade as a bounty to the local merchants. As a sign of some of the things we've done. We're finding some nice treasures in here, some agates and some cash as well. Powerful odor of spices rise from one of the dishes. Vibrant dyes and grain seed fill the uh, fill the others. Perhaps some offerings? There's another scalded ear. Well, I think that fight went particularly well. <laughs> If we can, if we can continue fighting at that level of efficiency and coordination, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna do well. All right, let's let's continue creeping forward since we're moving into unknown territory here. There is a bell, hmm, an addendum add-on to our, our quest for buried secrets. Do we chime the bell? Three bells hang from stone protrusion that runs along this wall. Years of dust and grime coat the, coat the metal. There is one large bell at the center, flanked by two smaller ones. I examine the bells more closely. The bells appear fully intact. They are made of thick iron and look very heavy. There doesn't appear to be much out of the ordinary about them. I ring the middle large bell. Curiosity gets the better of me. You heave the bell, and as it swings back in the other direction, the clapper strikes a low, powerful night against the, a note against the heavy iron. You feel the ringing in your chest as the sound moves through the ruined halls in a rolling tide. Very well, ring the smaller bell. The bell ties, tolls a high piercing note of startling power. The tone echoes merrily through the halls until it seems that a dozen chirping notes ring through the temple. Ring the right bell. The bell sounds a strange warbling peal that grows to a painful shrillness before it diminishes to a mournful chime. Mm, silence the bells. You reach out to hold the clapper still and the, the echoes diminish. Uh, I know not the sacred ringing of the bells in which order they should be rang. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, now, I have not the ability to unlock this door, I think we might need to search for a key, because, uh, it has a, it has a very complex lock on it, so let's see if we can head around, though. Perhaps if some of the walls have collapsed or something, we might find an alternative path, or we may find a key somewhere. Alright, let's sneak through here. What a mysterious place full of uh, enemies so far that we've done a decent job with. Now, I'm going to creep forwards a little bit more and see what we find. Is there any more in here? There is one of the larger ones. These ones did prove to be stronger. Uh, so these are the Skulder Whelps, and of course these are fully grown Skulders. Makes sense. Let me just see if I can creep forwards a bit here and see. There is another larger one to the left. So there's at least three. There could be more, though. Uh, I'm not liking the position that I'm in exactly to engage them here. There's a, there's a good chance they could surround us and cause a lot of problems. So what I might do is have, uh, let's have Aelor, let's have, uh, Adair stand sort of over here. We'll have Aeloth move out, and he can, uh, he can move back around, and I'm gonna sort of just take a step back here so I don't get noticed. Alright, Aeloth, alright, we're slowly, slowly getting noticed there. We do have this sort of, like, rubble here that could work to our advantage. No, stay there, stay there. Okay, let's plan a little bit here. I think, uh, I think using, like, the confusion spell again once they're close is, is a Hi. solid strategy. Um, until then, I think I might have, I think I might have Aleph hang, hang back, actually. I think that might hey. be best. Alright, let's have Adair, Adair stand exactly where he is. And, uh, I'll open with... Would Mind Blast be able to knock the second one down if I hit him from here? Uh, it might well, it might well. If I position myself slightly to the left, I might be able to Mind Blast this one down. Oh, it's effective. The, the secondary concussive blast is here. And it has tripped him up. All right, we're gonna move, we're gonna retreat back here, so that we can sort of funnel them in and not get surrounded. All right, let's see if we can. Um, let's see. Let's switch back to our melee weapons, of course. Let's see if we can sort of kill this guy before the others arrive. We may not have actually uh, drawn the other one either. All right, let's let's everyone attack here. This should work well. We might be able to finish this whirl off before the other one gets to us. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Yep, Adair's moving in. That's perfect. And I will, uh, I will use another, another mind wave on him here. It should work fine. We can do that safely without hurting our friend as well. All right, good so far. Good so far. Adair is dazed from the attacks of the, uh, of the whelp there. All right, let's grab the whelp's ear. So far, so good. So far, so good. There was another one to deal with. We may be able to deal with this one pretty easily, at least. All right, is it just the one though? 
Let's poke forwards a little bit. Right, he, uh, oh, he has noticed. I was, I made the mistake of not creeping around silently. Okay, in that case, then, we shall move up to engage, and I'll have myself use a, uh, I'll try and, I'll see if I can blind and daze him myself, because that might make a fight go a little bit better. Oh, there's actually two of them there. Alright, Adair, you stay here. Yes. And I'll have, um, I think I'm gonna have Aloth. Uh, we'll see if we we'll see if we can confuse them again. Hmm. I might have to wait for them to engage first. So let's let's wait for them to move up. All right, perfect. That's what we want. All right, let's go ahead and confuse them. Right there should work perfectly. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> All right, let's let's re let's reposition that spell. Careful not to confuse uh, Adair himself. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, cancel, cancel the spell and cha change. We change. Um, I might try and blind this one then, since he's a danger to Aloth at the moment. All right, we can hope we can hopefully deal with this then. We might have to deal with this the old-fashioned way though. Oh, Aloth taking a bit of a beating. I can't have Aloth in, uh, disengage at the moment. He'll take a hit. All right, that's better. There we go. We we took a we took a lot of damage there. Not so great. He looked a bit dazed from the attacks. All right, let's pick up the scalded ears. Well, we have to get a nice little chunk of cash out of that. All right, our endurance is regenerating. I'll see what I can find. Is there anything hiding around here? Hmm. Oh, some coins on the bookshelf. There's also some rubble here that we can search, and some more bookshelves over here to search too. Hmm, a fine sword. A, a well, sort of a well-crafted sword here. Fine gives additional accuracy and a boost to damage as well. Nice. We'll definitely take that. Uh, I myself currently am using a, a battle axe, which is slashing damage, but the fine sword might actually be a better choice. It is it is higher damage. Uh, the speed is about the same. It seems like it's probably going to be an all-round better choice, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take that. And currently, uh, remember this... We're mostly fighting Scolders, which are, they don't have any particular damage resistances. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to continue using the Torch for now. But we may wish, I may wish to switch to the uh, Battle Axe against the Spiders. Hmm, a Potion of Fleet Feet. 3 plus move speed for 30 seconds. Could be nice for repositioning within combat, I guess. Ah, pick the lock perfectly. Uh, just a hunting bow inside. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Let's search the bookshelf as well, see if there's anything in here. The Great Western Stag Book of Verses. Let me check the Book of Verses briefly. I'm looking out for anything that could potentially uh, hint towards the bells and their use. Alright, it details a few different uh, psalms and verses, but nothing of interest uh, related to what we're currently doing. Keeping an eye out. Alright, let's creep through this door over here and see. We haven't been in this area yet. It opens up into a larger room and there is a spider. Okay, let's prepare a little bit more. We may be engaging a large pack of spiders here if we're not careful. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to dual wield with the, uh, battle axe offhand, which should be more effective. Actually, it was, they were, they were resistant to slashing and, uh, took more damage from crushing. Ah, I, I got it the wrong way around. In that case, then, uh, I may wish, I may wish to use, uh, I may wish to use an alternative weapon. I can use, uh, well, let's use, let's use the torch offhand. That should work reasonably well, then. But, uh, we'll probably mostly be dealing with them with magic anyway, to be honest. Alright, let me creep forwards and see if how many spiders are in here. What are we dealing with exactly? Let's be careful. Alright, just one spider who doesn't see us currently. And it's facing in the wrong direction too. Is there anything else? There is a larger spider over there too. Okay. Uh, oh, they're going to spot me if I'm not careful. Alright, it has been alerted to my presence. Alright, I got a little bit over eager, guys. I got a little bit over eager. Okay. Um, he's not going to be super... It is not going to be super effective against these with his cutlass. But we can move in and use... Um, Use some magic. I probably want to use the minor missiles on the the larger spider there. He's going to have to move into position, which will be difficult. Uh, let's use mind wave on this smaller one here and try and try and damage it before it gets to us. All right, took a little bit of damage, not super effective. All right, uh, bow should be reasonably. I might be able to take a shot at it before it gets to me here. Nah, it's way too fast. The little spider scuttles super quickly. Lava. All right, the magic missiles go out. 
There's another spider there. Yes. Let's have Aloth take a step back. I don't want him to sort of get surrounded by spiders himself. And I don't know, I don't know how effective we will be at confusing the spiders, but we can try. We can try. All right, let me put a confusion field down here. Let's see how that goes. Ah, work. All right, looks like I was able to confuse one of them. And now let's all focus on this spider. Since the smaller one is now fighting for us. Perfect. Damn, that's super powerful. Now we're gonna have to finish this one. <laughs> As he turns, we finish him off. All right, that went pretty well. That went pretty well. Not too bad. We took a little bit of damage. Slowly wearing us down. A spider venom sack. Probably used for making uh, poisons or potions, I guess. Maybe anti antidotes, antivenoms could be useful. All right, uh, let's just make make sure this is just the one spider here. Uh, there's two little spiders. All right, we can we can engage with these guys just fine though. Let's have our two me uh, two melee fighters move up and engage. And I'll have we're gonna have to rest soon anyway, so we'll have Aeloth use some magic missiles to weaken this one. Lava it's a nice fast spell. You can really get that out quickly. Let's have it out! <laughs> Action-packed and spider combat. I love igniting them and killing them that way, though. It's so satisfying. The red-brown smears flake away under the toe of your boot. Mm. A large pool of blood. It looks like uh, some killing was definitely done here. All right, let's move up and have a look up here. This looks like a particularly significant place. The nearby crystals light the cracked mosaic floor in the shades of orange and at certain angles the metallic symbol beneath your feet gleams gold. As you look on the air shimmers and it is as if with a summer heat. The very dust and air seem to pull together until a thin glowing mist appears before you. In its rippling gleam you sometimes think you can see the shape of a man. Features rendered in broad, broad strokes of air and smoke. Is, is anyone else seeing this? Your voice sparks movement, the spirit surges with a sudden blazing light, and then the next moment you are somewhere else, your mind assailed with a sudden wave of fear and noise. You are in a chapter hall. Priests and faithful have ga gathered in a great crowd, spilling into the great hall. Bodies press against you, surging forward to listen. Your own grief is mirrored in the faces around you. Some of the initiates are weeping. Someone has snuffed the candles, and the room is dark, save for the podium, lit from behind. Two people stand before it, lit in silhouette. A man is shouting, voice so ragged with fear you cannot understand what he says. But the Rectrix stands calm, unmoved. Her strength will see you all through these dark times. You feel that hope like a spark behind your ribs. Somewhere behind you, someone begins to sing. The spirit tears itself from, your, from you with, with sudden, dizzying force, and you find yourself back before the ruined altar, swaying. The spirit fades as suddenly as it appeared. I'm not sure what to make of this. Very, very interesting and intriguing. There's been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of evil done here. A lot of people slain because of their religion. And uh, now it is full, it's filled with just essential, essentially just beasts that have moved in. But I, I don't doubt that as we move deeper in search of uh, the corpses of the priests that have been slain, things will get darker and, take, and darker. But so far though, Clearing my first dungeon has been so much fun. Breaking character for a little bit, guys. <laughs> how good is the combat in this game? I love it. I love how strategic and tactical it is, trying to position correctly, using our different spells, and I love the spells too. They're so satisfying and powerful. Guys, we're going to have a lot of fun dungeon clearing ahead of us. I hope you guys are enjoying it, but for this episode, that is it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. That is it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.